So we've gone over the hero and we've gone over the worst, but what about the laziest? Is this the worst Gumball episode? Let's see. Also plug in my Discord. <laughs> So we start off with Nicole giving Richard a few chores to do while she's at work, with Richard not just accepting, but being very enthusiastic about chores. Oh, and if you haven't noticed, they have oval eyes instead of circle eyes. Yes, this is a season one episode. It's been a while since I covered one of these. See you later. It sounds less like lazy and more like his spine needs to rest to support such a thick upper body. Richard then responds with the same answer as to why I don't have a face revealed yet. Can't be bothered. These season 1 episodes didn't have as intense of a snarky feel as later seasons, so a lot of these episodes can end up looking simple by comparison. They're innocent, however, don't let that fool you. There are quite a few season 1 episodes that are heavily criticized, and considering that I'm covering this in my pursuit to find the worst episode, this is one of them. So, why? How about you little bank robbers take your loot to the safe house? Huh? <laughs> We're just taking out the trash, aren't we? Yeah. Enter Gumball and Darwin, who are the other major characters within this episode. Their dynamic here is that this episode dives into the depths of how lazy Richard can get. To some, we don't really know Richard at this point. He's been in the responsible, the third, the end, the dress, the spoon, the painting, of which I'd argue that the latter three episodes, the dress, the spoon, the painting, have at least a moderate appearance of Richard. So before that, he's either in the background bumbling around, or he's T-posing off camera, who knows? So it can be a little bit of a tricky situation to show him in such a negative light, tricking his children to do his bidding so that he can get some more sleep, as if he doesn't have enough already. It also makes other episodes look a lot worse in hindsight. They're obviously not happy about the fact that despite Richard promising to play with them, he tricks them into doing his chores, as a guise for actually spending time with your family. Once describing that he's lazy, Gumball and Darwin decide they want to out-lazy their dad. If you can find anyone lazier than me in this town, I'll do your chores for a whole day. And if you lose, you'll do mine for the rest of your life. How does that sound? Sounds like someone should be working in the game industry with that level of benefits and consequences mindset. Putting comical exaggeration to the side, I don't find the setup to this to be that bad. I think it's quite tame compared to the negatively received episodes that come later. It's like Spongebob, where a bad episode from the first three seasons is nothing like the bad episodes that come after those. Because the tone of the episode and the level of subtlety that makes what bad episodes are to be bad is so radically different that the bad episodes episodes stand out significantly later on, although it could be because we damper down the shortcomings of first seasons of shows. Both Spongebob and Gumball are great examples of that. So cue Gumball and Darwin's futile efforts to beat Richard at his own game, watching TV, trying to out yawn someone, and eating junk food. Speaking of that, one minor thing about Gumball that I really touch upon is their personification of anything and everything. It's actually fundamental to the show, and it's something that while rough now, would become a polished part of the show. Everywhere you look and everywhere you go Sugar, sugar, sugar from your head to your toe When you've eaten lots of sugar and you've had too much Watch out everybody, it's a sugar rush Watch out everybody, it's a sugar rush <laughs> Another part of this that interests me a lot is how tiny details like eyelashes or Richard's whiskers would go on to be heavily refined later on. They definitely hit the ground running to start and then work on the details as they go on. I also enjoy the quick nature and lack of meta humor here. The lack of meta humor is what makes it have its punch when it comes back. Do you hear that season 5 and 6? They go off to try to find someone who can out-lazy Richard. In Elmore, there really aren't that many choices. But maybe this guy all the way on the right can be a contender. Dude hasn't stopped looking in this same direction since the scene started. It's either a thousand yard stare or he too is upset that McDonald's released the spicy chicken nuggets and you see the box in the articles, yet you can't find it anywhere. Like why show me the picture of what could be if I can't get it? Hi, Billy Mays here for Mighty Putty. The easy way to fix, fill and seal virtually anything fast and make it last. So they learn about Lazy Larry, who is exactly who you would expect him to be. However, my minor gripe with this episode actually has to do with the running gag here. It's a long story, son, that goes way back to the summer of 83. 
Not once in this episode do they dive into visually the summer of 83, and I always found that to be annoying. Beyond Larry explaining it briefly, it is pretty much an afterthought disguised as the main point. I suppose it could be a hashtag relatable moment, like if you and a friend went, hey remember that summer back between 9th and 10th grade? And without any further information, they understand you. It's specific enough to date, but not specific enough to know the contents of what happened. Maybe it's a commentary on how shows can often throw in a completely alien, unconnected piece of lore that you just have to trust a show on because there's nothing surrounding or connecting it that leads up to or shows results that came from said event. But I see it as one of the best examples of lost potential. Considering what Larry turns out to be, I would imagine the summer of 83 is tantamount in the current mindset of Larry and why he works so many jobs and is so crucial to the upkeep of Elmore. I'm not saying that we need to have a three part special just for a minor character like Larry, but I do feel like if this episode were in seasons 4 and beyond, they would have been a little bit more ambitious is all I'm trying to say rather than keeping it up in the air and reminding us that it is there and we will never know the canon things that happened. That irritates me more than Richard tricking his kids. And you know what, wait a minute. This episode was put in the same conversation as the worst and the hero? Seriously, when you think of a family casting their children to the curb because they don't see the intrinsic value of someone who's been documented to do a minimal amount of work, or the family coming together to provide pseudo arguments for why their category is the most oppressed, how did we put this episode about Richard tricking his children into doing chores in the same category? I'm seriously reconsidering that if this episode doesn't give me a reason why I should put this in the same name as those other episodes right now, I'm gonna- I was the laziest guy in Elmore until I lost my title to Richard Watterson. <gasps> I'm not that guy anymore. I've got a car now, and a great new house, and a girlfriend who I'm gonna marry. So thank you for shopping at food and stuff, and please go home now. Hello there, value- <laughs> Please do it! Oh, yeah, I totally forgot about that part. Yeah, so, um, to put it bluntly, Gumball and Darwin ruin Larry's life. They take away his job, his car, girlfriend, house, within a minute or so, all for a competition with Richard. And while it does make Gumball and Darwin look absolutely horrible, I'm going to shoot this episode some well-needed bail. I'm going to be the defense attorney here. They do pull out all the stops to make it comical. Like for example, putting their begging into a song on a radio that a DJ dedicates to Larry, or when they replace the eggs in the carton, creating a different vocal effect to emphasize their split voices apart coming together. It's not a flat out minute of the episode playing it straight that Gumball and Darwin are hovering over Larry and ruining his life. And even this part is so quick that the episode dives into other territories pretty quickly. You can easily move on to the next thing, unlike another trio, in which the episode would have taken this minute and stretched it out into an entire episode, sometimes. I can't say that I feel that level of hatred towards this episode as others have, but I do understand that ruining a man's life for an unnecessary competition will make some people feel feel uncomfortable about the implications here, especially considering that Larry gives off undertones that he worked his butt off to get where he is now, and that he doesn't appear the most confident, and really is afraid to lose it all. Okay, now I see why this is considered one of the worst episodes, especially since Larry doesn't even show up. Lazy Larry, huh? Why, that's a name I haven't heard since the summer of 80- oh, Nobody cares about the summer of 83! Sorry. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Excuse me, Blueberry Shortcake. I care about the summer of 83. I care. And I think that would be a fantastic episode. I can picture it now. We have a young Richard and Larry who are rivals, but were considered to be the lowest of the low on the kids' social totem pole, so they didn't have any friends. And at the time, the kids decided to have lazy offs during the summer, in which Larry would win all the time. However, Richard, being on the other side of Elmore, did not know of such a competition, and was just lazy for fun. One side of Elmore more considered Richard to be the laziest, and the other side considered Larry to be the laziest. So they have a lazy off, in which the senior citizens from earlier are judges, and also a younger version of themselves, and it's a fierce competition, well as fierce as a lazy off can be, which ends with Larry imagining his life, being the laziest kid who turns into the laziest teen, who turns into the laziest adult. Imagining Richard's life to be a living nightmare. This image of his potential future self shocks him so bad that from that point on, he works off the weight, he applies for every job in Elmore with the photo of his 
past self as a reminder to work hard or become what he would have become. To Richard, he wins and thus have a smug outlook towards Larry, considering himself to be superior, which makes them both rivals to this day. But yes, getting back to what actually happened, Larry doesn't come back in this episode. Despite the scale of destruction that Gumball and Darwin did to his life, he comes across as a huge butt monkey in this episode, and that's saying something considering other episodes. And all of it happened for basically having to do with Richard in the summer of 83. Oh, okay then, I'll just use my supernatural powers. <laughs> So in addition to teasing us with the summer of 83 and ruining Larry's life, the cherry on top of the pissing people off cake has to go to Richard hearing Nicole's car and pretending to work as a ruse for forfeiting the lazy off to throw his kids under the bus as they celebrate, feigning working hard the entire day to now trick Nicole. Again, it makes the hero look really interesting with episodes like these. It's super annoying to see this, but it does have a valuable lesson. Gumball, Darwin, play with people your own age. They seem to have some ambition and generally don't want to screw you over. Do I consider this to be the worst episode? No, but it might be the worst episode in season one. It's certainly not the best performance of any major character here. However, this wasn't offensively bad to me. It still retains that season one charm of being comical, even when discussing matters like these. But what is the worst episode of The Amazing World of Gumball to you? Let me know in the comments down below. Until then, special thanks to the supporters of February. And until next time, take care. Alpha out.